You've reached Frightfully Forgotten. Please leave your horror movie request after the beep. Hi, Frightfully Forgotten. I just ordered one of your t-shirts and it came and it was crawling with bed bugs. was that what that intro that's the new intro that yeah you said you wanted to do a new intro just like that one i was kidding kidding yeah that took a lot of time to put together oh, what can i tell you man it's garbage just play the real one next time all right welcome back to season four of frightfully forgotten and uh, to kick things off, we're going to be having some part four horror movie... What's wrong with you? Nothing. What are we drinking? Today we're drinking an Earl Grey IPA. Nice. Today we're talking about Hellraiser 4. 4. <laughs> Bloodline. It is written by Peter Atkins, and he wrote Hellraisers 2 and 3. And he also wrote, like, all the Wishmaster movies. It's directed by Kevin Yeager, and this is the only feature film he's ever directed. He's mostly an effects artist, and he did the effects in Nightmare on Elm Street 2, 3, and 4, one of the Friday the 13th, and just tons of stuff. Bruce Ramsey is in this, and uh, he plays the main character, M Mershon. He's also in Pin, and he's just in a lot of TV, Canadian he's TV. Canadian I mean. boy. <laughs> yeah. Valentina Vargas is in this, and uh, she was in The Name of the Rose, The Peasant Girl. Yeah. Kim Myers is also in this, and uh, she was in Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Our favorite <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. That's right. The movie starts in 2127, so way off in the future. It starts off on a space station, and this man is using a robot. He's controlling the robot with these kind of gloves, shows an opening, and then it opens and the robot like blows up. <laughs> And then Pinhead comes onto the screen and kind of looks. Then all these guards burst in and they capture this guy. He's being interrogated by the leader of this squad. Her name is Rimmer. <laughs> <laughs> For him to explain exactly what he's up to, he's got to go way back. I'm not sure they really have a whole lot of time yeah, for yeah, all of yeah, this yeah, now yeah. that Pinhead's yeah. in the picture, but... The story starts in 1796. Merchant's ancestor, Le Marchand, mm -hmm. is a toy maker, and he's been commissioned to make this special box by this old aristocrat who's wearing this <laughs> sick wig, and he's got all these sores on his lips because he's all probably full of syphilis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes to deliver the box. He's got this buddy with him, this young boy, and he also has a girl with him. They strangle the girl, and they skin her. Yeah. Perfectly. Find out that he's like a Satanist, like devil worshipper. He's into black magic and stuff like that. And he's got this box commissioned so he can open up a portal to hell and summon a demon which he can control and use to his own wishes. He then begins opening up the box. Skin <laughs> starts filling up into like a real body. Summons forth this demon named Angelique. Le Marchand has been watching this happen through the window. He tries designing a box to like counteract the effects of the first box. He goes to the aristocrat's house and you see the aristocrat guy he's all <laughs> tied up and torn up and carved <laughs> up. <laughs> And in the meanwhile, the Angelique demon is like bowing in his buddy there, the young boy. <laughs> yeah. And this poor guy is just thrown aside. <laughs> so they then kill the Mershon. And his wife has followed him and has seen this happen. She's carrying their unborn boy. The story fast forwards to 1996. The current Mershant, I guess he's merchant now, is an architect and he designed this building unwittingly like the lament configuration but he doesn't really know it angelique sees merchant's picture on the cover of a magazine so she goes to new york to end the bloodline sort of seduces this kind of putz guy <laughs> yeah, bumps into him and <laughs> yeah drops her purse and yeah. oh i'm sorry and 
Let me make it up to you. Oh, oh, oh. lures him down the stairs into like the basement yeah. and everything. And he's all, oh, I just thought a room would be good enough. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah not with this woman. Yeah. The box is there gets this poor bastard to kind of start playing with the box. I like how you need your shirt off to open up the box. <laughs> yeah. Like in all these movies, they always have their shirt off. Yeah, they're all sweating. sweating. <laughs> and all these chains shoot out and shoot right into him and just drag him yeah. right off. Out of the portal comes Pinhead. And he sees that this building can be used to open a bigger portal to hell. Before they do this, though, they have to kill Merchant, because Merchant is in the process of creating an anti-configuration box called the Elysium Configuration Box. It's supposed to close the portals to hell forever. So Angelique is, seems to be kind of stalling on their plan here. Pinhead finally gets a little pissed off, just kidnaps Merchant's family. Poor bastard Merchant ends up dying in a pretty gruesome way. A chain goes right through his throat. And when it goes through, his blades open up and it yeah. gets retracted and cuts his head off, which yeah. is pretty wicked. When he dies, though, his wife ends up actually opening that box, sort of sends them all back. Now we fast forward again to the future, and it's up to this future merchant to put an end to the whole fucking business. So why are we talking about Hellraiser Bloodline? It's one of the more underrated part fours, for sure. Yeah. It's a bit of a confusing movie, but the idea and the premise is pretty cool. There seems to be a general theme about part fours, too. There's a backstory, then there's the movie, and then there's the end that kind of just wraps everything up. Yeah, it's supposed to be the last one. <laughs> yeah. And it's very cool how you get to finally see how the box is originally made, why it's made, mm -hmm. and what it actually does. It's kind of neat because it's almost like an anthology movie as well because you got like three different little stories right. that all tie into each other to make one big story. Pinhead in this is I think probably the coolest since like the first one. He's very poignant. He's his dialogue is very strong in this, yeah, too. Yeah, very poetic. And he's very polite. <laughs> yeah. He's like, gentlemen. And like, <laughs> that's the way people should talk to each other. Nice and courteous. He, he wants yeah. to inflict pain, but he's very nice about it. <laughs> exactly. That's how you should be. Yeah. Humble. Yeah, people should learn from Pinhead. This is how you <laughs> conduct yourself in society. <laughs> or hell. Hell's a very polite place. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> The kills in this movie are, are great. There's not many of them. No, which is actually kind of good yeah, too. Yeah. Don't make me put some pain on you, man! <laughs> pain. I am pain. Yeah. <laughs> and he, you want to be together forever, don't you? And he all <laughs> rigs up some machine <laughs> Twist thing. them all together. <laughs> Oh, that part's awesome, though. We should have done the whole episode all twisted <laughs> together so our <enough>. faces <laughs> are all mashed up. And at the end, in space, what we didn't really cover, because you have to watch that if you haven't seen the movie yet, there's some good kills there, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the effects are very good. This is still the days of mostly practical effects. Right, with just a um, little bit of CGI. A little bit of CGI. And the CGI that is in this is pretty poor, because mm -hmm. it's 1996. But, uh, but the practical effects are very good. This movie did suffer a lot from production problems, and it shows in the final product. Because it's a little spotty, and there are little holes, little plot holes and stuff that you can tell. Right. The original cut was 110 minutes. The studio saw it, they didn't like it, they wanted Pinhead to be in it more, they wanted Pinhead to be in it earlier. The director did not like this. He was very pissed off, he had a vision, and he said, well, fuck this. I'm not coming back for any reshoots. I'm taking my name off of it. It's been kind of a little bit mangled by the studio. Yeah. And I think that's where the movie suffers because um, you can see kind of where that's happening and mm -hmm. some things aren't explained as much as they could be. Really, really bad reviews. People shit all over it. It was also the last Hellraiser to be, ever be released in theaters. That's it. If you haven't seen Hellraiser Bloodline, please check it out. It's a worthy number four. And until next time, keep drinking. In hell, <laughs> the coin of the realm is pain. I like pain. <laughs> Damn, we forgot to do that. <laughs>